inventory valuation and cost flow methods weighted average method in weighted average cost flow method the seller averages the cost of all items on hand and purchase during the period the units in ending inventory and units sold are costed at this average cost the method is fairly accurate if all purchases production runs and beginning inventory quantities are equal for further discussion of weighted average method let's proceed on example number one during january 2019 kokushibo recorded the following information pertaining to its inventory so we have the details here about the inventory of kokushibo we have the units and the unit cost balance at january 1 2019 1000 units and the cost per unit is one dollar purchase on january 7 2019 kokushibo purchased 600 units of inventory costing three dollars per unit on january 2020 or january 20 2019 sorry sold 900 units of inventory so there is a sale happened on january 20 2019 and on january 25 purchased 400 units of inventory at five dollars per unit the questions are under the weighted average method what amount should kokushibo report as inventory on january 31 2019 and under the weighted average method, what amount should Kokushibo report as cost of goods sold at January 31, 2019? So we have to determine the cost of in the cost of inventory at January 31, 2019, which is the cost of ending inventory of Kokushibo and the cost of sales for the month of January of Kokushibo using the weighted average cost flow method. Okay, earlier it was mentioned that the seller averages the cost of items on hand and purchase during the period when the entity using weighted average method. Since the seller or the entity averages the total cost of items on hand and purchase during the period, so the formula to compute the weighted average cost is the total goods available for sale in dollars and divided by, by the total goods available for sale in units so total goods available for sale in dollars or the tigas in dollars divided by the total goods available for sale in units or the tigas in units we can compute the weighted average cost per unit of inventory the units in ending inventory and units sold are costed at this average cost so the average cost mentioned here is actually the weighted average cost per unit. And the ending inventory, we can compute the ending inventory by multiplying the ending inventory in units and the weighted average cost per unit, which is here. And to compute the cost of sales or the cost of goods sold, multiplying the cost of goods sold, the cost of goods sold in units or the units or the quantity of units sold by the weighted average cost per unit, we can determine the cost of goods sold of entity using the weighted average method. So these formulas are going to apply here in this problem. So we can determine the cost of inventory and the cost of goods sold. To determine the cost of ending inventory and the cost of goods sold, we have to determine first the weighted average cost per unit in determining the weighted average cost per unit we have to divide the total goods available for sale in dollars divided by the total goods available for sale in units so let's compute first the total goods available for sale in dollars and the total goods available for sale in units so considering considering the facts available in the problem we have to compute the total goods available for sale so we have the, here the units and the unit cost units times unit cost equals the total cost 
Okay, first, the balance at January 1, 2019, which is 1,000 units costing $1 each. 1,000 units times $1, the total cost of inventory at January 1, 2019 is $1,000. Next, purchases. The purchases occurred on January 7, 2019, where in Kokoshibo purchased 600 units of inventory at $3 each. 600 units times $3 per unit. The total cost of purchases on January 7, 2019 is $1,800. Sold on January 20, 2019, 900 units. Do we, need to, do we need to consider the transaction happened on January 20? 2019, which is the sale of 900 units. We have to remember that the to, the, to compute the total goods available for sale is beginning inventory plus the total cost of purchases. So any units sold mentioned in the problem is not considered in computing the total goods available for sale. So we will ignore that the transaction happened on January 20, 2019 in computing the total goods available for sale. <coughs> Next, purchase on January 25, 2019. So purchases again happened January 25, 2019. Kokoshibo purchased 400 units of inventory costing $5 each. So the total cost of purchases happened January 25, 2019 is $2,000. Beginning inventory is considered and purchases already considered, so we can now determine the total goods available for sale in units and in amount. Total goods available for sale in units is 2,000 units. Total goods available for sale in dollars, $1,000 plus 1,800 plus 2,000 equals $4,800. We have now the date we have now the data of total goods available for sale in dollars which is 4,800 and the total goods available for sale in units which is 2,000. We can now determine the weighted average cost per unit. The total goods available for sale in dollars divided by the total goods available in units. We have $4,800 divided by 2,000 units. units. Therefore, the weighted average cost per unit of Kokushibo is $4,800 divided by 2,000 equals $2.40 per unit of inventory. The first question is we have to determine the ending inventory at January 31, 2019. We already have the data for the weighted average cost per unit which is $2.40 per unit. And to compute the ending inventory, the ending inventory equals ending inventory in units times the weighted average cost per unit. We already have the data of total goods available for sale so we have to carry over this data into this blue index card. So we have the total goods available for sale in units, which is 2,000 units. And Kokoshibo have a, have a sale transaction on January 20, which is 900 units. We have to determine the ending inventory. So we have to deduct the uh, number of units sold during the month of January. Units sold, 900 units. Therefore, the ending 
inventory in units is 1,100 units of inventory. We already have the data for the ending inventory in units and the weighted average cost per unit. Multiplying the weighted average cost per unit and the ending inventory in units will give us the amount of ending inventory using the weighted average method. Ending inventory equals ending inventory in units times the weighted average cost. Ending inventory in units, 1,100 times the weighted average cost per unit, which is $2.40 per unit. Therefore, ending inventory of Kokoshibo for the month of January is 2,600 Forty dollars. Ending inventory of Kokushibo at January 31, 2019 is 2,640 dollars. Next question is what amount should Kokushibo report as cost of goods sold at January 31, 2019? Cost of goods sold using the weighted average cost method of cost flow methods in inventory cost of goods sold is equal to cost of goods sold in units or the number of units sold times the weighted average cost per unit the number of units sold during the month of january is 900 units 900 units times the weighted average cost which is 2.4 dollars per unit the cost of sales or the cost of goods sold for the month of january using the weighted average method is $2,160 For number 2, the answer is $2,160 Cost of goods sold 